does uh, God hear the sinner's prayer? Or uh, in other words, is the sinner's prayer biblical? Can you say that I prayed this prayer and uh, I got saved? Like uh, what I see in most churches, people just go and uh, you hear a pastor preaching about Moses or preaching about Abraham and things like that. And once something which is not even involved with the gospel and after he is finished, he says, how many want to receive Christ in their hearts? Come here and say this prayer. And you'll hear people say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer asking for forgiveness of my sins. I confess uh, all, 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 all these stories which are written here. And they, they are told, okay, yeah, now you're saved. And of course, uh, apart from this kind of sinner's prayer, we also have the other Catholic sinner's prayer, which uh, <laughs> this one is just even more um, worse. I can say this is, is, is a heresy. Because they are, they are praying to Mary. I wonder, how do you pray to Mary? And Mary is dead. Oh, Mary, immaculate virgin, so fair, mother of our Savior, please hear my prayer. You see, Mary is not omnipresent. She cannot hear. And where she is, the Bible says, the dead know nothing. The dead know nothing. So even if you tell her to intercede, dearest mother, blah, blah, blah. You see, all... all all these things, they are good. Fine. Mary was not bad. Mary is good. But now the problem is, let's take for example, if you go to a hospital, do you ask for the doctor or do you ask for the mother of the doctor? Who between the two are you, do you trust? Do you go to a, to a hospital and say, oh, please, uh, ca can you call me the mother of the, of the neurosurgeon who, you know, is called so and so? I want the mother, not the, not the doctor. Does it work like that? So that, that's why I'm, I'm mixed up when I see people praying to Mary. But now, the story today is not even about Catholic. It's about the, the sinner's prayer in general. The sinner's prayer. Does it really help you? Do you get saved by this sinner's prayer? Now, I want us to break down this and I show you clearly what the Bible says about this. Because uh, the Bible is very clear. In the last days, people will fall away to some things that they cannot even explain. There is no example in the Bible where we see the sinner's prayer. Or somebody say this prayer for salvation. There is no one single place. Now, let's see first what the Bible tells us. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, it tells us, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. You see, falling away is a major thing which will happen in the last days. People will stop what they once believed and start believing in some heresies, start believing in some things. And you ask somebody, hey, are, are you sure you say by this prayer? They tell you, yeah, you see, I prayed this prayer, I did this. This is what the Bible is saying. This is falling away. Jesus told us to believe the gospel. He did not tell us to say a prayer for salvation. Okay? And uh, the Bible is very keen about this because in the last days, this will happen so much. Let me show you. In, in 1 Timothy 4, verse uh, 1 and 2, it tells us how the last days will be, my friends. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You see, there are things we are calling the doctrines of devils. Satan is coming up with his own doctrine, saying that uh, this sinner's prayer is going to save you. While Jesus said, he is the one who saves people. Have you ever heard someone say, oh, Yesterday we could have had a very bad accident. It's those prayers which we prayed which saved us. Were you saved by a prayer really? You are saved by Jesus. You see people put trust in something which is not God and it becomes their idol. A prayer is good. But then if you put the prayer before Christ, then you're sinning. The prayer becomes your God. Are you seeing the point here? So there are some, some something called the uh, doctrines of devil, devils here. Whereby people are running into. Okay? And I want to explain to you that right now we are at that time 
of apostasy, falling away, people coming out from the truth of the word of God and listening to fallacies and stories. And these are this is how we do our things. This is how we found things being done in our religion, in our organization. And we're just following. We're just following. Come on. You can't change anything. We found it like that. You have to read your Bible. You definitely have to read your Bible and understand, okay, what are they following? If all of them, they are blind people, are you going to fall into a ditch with them? No. Read your Bible and ask yourself, what can I do to be saved? And read from the Bible and get the answer. Don't follow doctrines of men. Okay? Because these last days, people will love themselves so much. And they will not want to hear anything which is telling them that they are sinners and they need Christ. And they, they just need to, it's like you just need a button where you can go and press two buttons and, and you're cool. And uh, you don't need to think about anything. You don't need to uh, understand what Jesus did for you. You just want what your itching ears are telling you. Okay, let's see Second Timothy. Second Timothy 3 verses 1. It tells us, know this also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, hearty, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God, having a form. This is where I wanted you to see. These people will have a form of godliness. They kind of look as if they are believers. They kind of look as if they are saved. But they deny the power thereof. From such people turn away. They deny the power. Where is the power? The power is in the blood of Jesus. There is power, power in the blood of Jesus. Everybody knows that there is power in the blood of Jesus. But these people, they deny the power. The power in the blood of Jesus. The power in the gospel. You see, Apostle Paul tells us, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel is all about how that Christ died for our sins, who was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. How that Christ died. How did he die? He died by shedding his blood, his powerful blood. That blood has the power has the power to save. But people will not want that power, but they just have a form of godliness and pretend as if they are saved, but they are not. These are the people who come up with the sinner's prayer. And they say, put your trust in this prayer. Don't put your trust in the gospel. Put your trust in the prayer. Are you seeing the point here? So it's really, really important to put our trust where it belongs. Okay? And the Bible tells us so many times that these people will come and they will try to trick other people into doing like them. Okay? It will, they will try to trick other people to be like them. It says in the book of Jude, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our Lord God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, these people, they deny God and they say, no, don't listen to God and his blood and all those kind of things. Just say the sinner's prayer and you're good. Just say the prayer and you're good. Don't listen to anybody who is telling you that Jesus saves. And No, just do the sinner's prayer. Just say this prayer and you're good. My friends, these are the people that the Bible is saying, they will creep unawares. They will come unawares. And they have come in religions. And they lie to people that, hey, this is what you need to do. Do this. When somebody tells you you need to do something, run. Run, my friends. There is nothing that you need to do. Actually, a prayer is only confession of what you have believed. How can you confess what you don't know? Let's say, for example, someone has not heard the gospel. How is he going to confess that Jesus died for the cross? He doesn't even know what he's confessing. How, if you go to a court of law 
and you start saying, I saw that thief. I saw the person who stole. I saw this and that. And you're confessing what you don't know. You are a liar and you deserve being jailed. Have you seen that this point, my friend? You deserve being jailed because you're saying something you don't know. Are you, are you seeing this? So these people, they follow what we call the doctrines of devils. The doctrines of devils. And they don't follow the gospel. Those who say the sinner's prayer saves. It doesn't save. Because we have to check what exactly saves us. Okay? What exactly saves us? First, let's get some instructions here. Ephesians 2 verses 8. Let's see some instructions here concerning salvation. It says, for by grace are you saved. What is grace? Grace is getting what you don't deserve. You don't deserve to be saved. You deserve going to hell because you're a sinner. Who deserves going to hell? For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. You see, this salvation is not of ourselves. It is the gift. It is a gift, a free gift. Can you buy a gift? No. Can you work for a gift? No. Not of works. You see, a gift is not something you can work for. Not of works, unless anyone should boast. So, first we understand that salvation is by grace through faith. And is not bought. You can't work for it. It is free. Okay? But then, after we are saved, you see people confused and they say, oh, but now you see, uh, uh, you have to do this and this and this and this. No. When we are, after we are saved, we have now been created. We are a new creation. Created in Christ Jesus. For what? For good works. Which God has before ordained that we should walk in there. Now, after we are created, after we are saved, is now when we are supposed to do good works. Become good, uh, go, show a good testimony, pray every day, do this and that, and uh, preach to the, 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 those who don't know uh, the gospel, touch the needy, and things like that. But salvation is not by anything you do. It is purely by faith, believing. And what is that salvation? Where is that gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, from verse 1 to 4. The gospel is, uh, is given here by the Apostle Paul. He says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. You see, not gospels. You see, there are people who say, Oh, gospel is uh, the, jo Matthew, uh, Luke, Mark, uh, uh, Ma Ma Mark and John. You see, the, the four books talking about Jesus. Those, those are just historical books telling about the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, giving the life. But you cannot be saved until Jesus dies on the cross. How can you say that I'm saved by the blood of Jesus who is still not dead and risen? How, how can you be saved by... <laughs> you see, a New Testament is only effected after the death of the testator. The book of Hebrews tells us that after the death of the testator, that's when we get the new covenant. So, this is the gospel after Jesus has already died. Paul tells us, I declare unto you the gospel, the good news of what you're going to find out, which I preached unto you. He's been preaching all through, which also you have received. How do you receive this gospel? By faith and wherein you stand. For those who stand on a sinner's prayer, you're standing on a shallow ground. And you're, you can fall any time. That's why you see somebody trying to pray the sinner's prayer a thousand times. Oh, hey, did I say that sinner's prayer? Well, I, I did this, my friends. I did this for, for years. Anytime I hear somebody talk about heaven and hell, I was so much scared and I was praying and, and I repeat that sinner's prayer over and over again. I use the right tone. I stand. I kneel down. I say this. I say, oh, is there a way that I've not said that sinner's prayer? Is there a word that I've left out? Because I believed in a sinner's prayer and what I was doing is that I was standing in the sinner's prayer. I was standing on the sinner's prayer. But we are supposed to stand on the gospel. This is what we are saved, by which also you are saved. You are saved by the gospel, the good news of what Jesus did for you. 
But you only said, if you keep in memory what was preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. How do you keep something in memory? By understanding it. Once you understand something, it comes from your mind to your heart. And it is from the heart that we believe. It's not from our mind. It is in our memory. Keeping in memory, it means it has gone to our hearts. In this context, memory doesn't mean our mind. It means coming from our, our mind to our hearts. Like, for example, when you're in school, your teacher could tell you, don't cram that formula. Understand it so that it can get into your memory. Because cramming, you will not understand it. And it means it will not stay in your memory. Because something that is in your memory, it means you have believed. Are you getting the point here? Unless you have believed in vain. Because those people who believe in vain are the people who think, ah, because I say this prayer, I think I'm saved. I think I'm saved because I say the prayer. But that is not what saves you. And, and Paul continues, For I deliver unto you first that which I also received. Okay? He's giving us something which has not created himself but he received and he told us in the book of galatians chapter 1 verse 11 to 12 he says that this gospel i'm preaching to you is not after man neither was i taught it but is by the revelation of jesus christ jesus revealed this gospel to paul and that is what is revealing to us also what he received and here is the gospel how how is the main thing here how he died, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, let's ask ourselves, how did Jesus die? Jesus died by shedding his blood. If Jesus could, could, not, could have died by strangling or heart attack or drowning in water, could there be salvation? I don't think so. Why? Because the book of Hebrews tells us without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So how Christ died by shedding his blood is really important because Leviticus 17.11 tells us that the life of the flesh is in the blood. That's where the life is. So the blood had to be taken out for that being to die so that payment can be done. Only through blood. And it's not just blood of any other uh, uh, person out there. You or me. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. I can't atone for you. You can't atone for me. It is a blood from someone who is sinless like Jesus. Because if both of us were guilty, who is going to help the other one? No, no one. Are you seeing the point here? So it's really, really important to understand. And that's why Jesus shed his blood so that you can get his life. So that's what saves us. It's not the sinner's prayer. Okay? It's not the sinner's prayer. And this new modern Christianity teaching of do this, do that, repeat this, repeat that to be saved, it's, it's a lie. It's a big lie, my friends. It's really a big lie. We are not saved by these things that we do. We are not saved by repeating things. Have you ever gone... To, 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 to a Catholic church or near someone who is a Catholic and they are repeating, repeat 10 Hail Marys, 5 Our Fathers or you see Islam they repeat 5 times a day prayer, five. God, God does not is not a machine God is not a machine that uh, you love to repeat this, repeat that repeat this and repeat that 10 times, 3 times per day as if you are taking drugs it, God is not a machine and he told us here he told us very clearly, when you pray, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who pray and pray and repeat and repeat. Let me let me show you this verse. I don't know if I have a verse here, but let me show you here. Uh, let me show you. I want to show you this, this verse. When you pray, Jesus told us how we should pray. Okay? Um, I want to show you this verse. Uh, repetition. Uh, wait, yeah. Vain repetition. 
the reason I love this, uh, yes, is here, is here. Matthew 6, 7. Look at what the Bible says here. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. You see, is, is, this, is this not the sinner's prayer? Brrr, repeat this, repeat this. Maybe they can even tell you repeat ten times. God says, I don't, I don't love repetitions. Just tell me. Pray sincerely. Pray sincerely. Are you seeing the point here? So it's really important for you to understand, am I, am I believing the gospel or am I believing in a prayer? Because if you're believing in a prayer, then uh, your gospel is fake and you're already blinded by Satan. Okay? Because the Bible tells us Satan is blinding people from the truth of the gospel and is giving them fallacies. You see 2 Corinthians 4 3. He says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. If you don't see the gospel, you're seeing the sinner's prayer, then you are lost, my friend. The gospel is what saves. And this gospel is hid to you because Satan is always doing this. In whom the God, you see with a small g, Satan, the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Believe what? The gospel. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. You see? You see? If you're believing in a sinner's prayer, then Satan is blinding you from the truth. He's telling you, believe in this. Believe this. Believe this. Because the Bible tells us we preach not ourselves. We don't preach a certain prayer. We don't preach. This prayer was set by some guy. He just sat down and he said, okay, let me, let me set some, uh, uh, some nice words here. We are not preaching these words which were sent by whoever guy it is. We preach Christ Jesus the Lord. And you ourselves, your servants for God's sake. You see, we are preaching Christ himself. We are not preaching a sinner's prayer. Okay? Because Satan is hiding. is hiding this so much. So that people can get lost. And go to, the, uh, to hell. Because they are believing a prayer. Instead of believing the gospel. Okay? God has a lot of love for the lost. He loves everyone. But he's telling you people, stop being lost, thinking that this prayer is saving you in any way. Okay? I don't know if I'm making some sense on this. You know, before you get saved, you must realize that you're lost. You first have to hear the bad news. The bad news that, man, you're lost. And you know, many people think that, oh, I'm not lost, but uh, what did I do wrong? <laughs> My friend, let me tell you, you are lost, you're a sinner. The Bible tells you that you are lost and you're a sinner. Why? Why? Because your father Adam was a sinner and you're in his own image. You're in the image of Adam. You're not in the image of God before you get saved. Many people might bash me on this, but let me show you five, three. Genesis 5.3. See, you're in the image of Adam, a sinner, not the image of God. And Adam lived 130 uh, and 30 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. You see, all the children born from Adam, they're in the image and likeness of Adam, the image and likeness of sinner, the image of a sinner, the likeness of a sinner. Are you seeing the point here? So you, you have to understand, I am a sinner. I am born a sinner. And I have to make sure that I believe in Christ so that I cannot go and lose my life in hell. Because I am from Adam. From one man, we all died. One man, Adam, we all died. But through one man, Jesus Christ, we get life. Are you seeing the point here? 
Because the wages of sin is death. So first you have to understand that, hey, my friend, I'm lost. That's the bad news and I deserve going to hell because the wages of sin is death. And then after you know that you're lost, the second thing is hear the gospel. Like I've told you, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, hear the gospel. And after you hear the gospel, then you understand the gospel. Because understanding is key. And unless you understand, you can never be saved. You can never be saved unless you understand what you're, what, what you're believing. And after you understand, then you believe. Believing is basically accepting. Feeling sure of the truth. Having faith and confidence and trust. Believe. And then after you believe, what do you do? You confess what you have believed. Because the Bible tells us we need to confess what you have believed. Remember the thief of the cross. When, uh, when that thief of the cross, he was, uh, he confessed and told Jesus what he has uh, believed from his heart. He told him, uh, uh, you Jesus, where you are going, please remember me. He confessed what he was already feeling and believing in his heart that this is the, this is son of God. He has done no sin, but we have sinned. Remember me. He confessed. And that's why Jesus spoke back and told him, today you'll be with me in paradise. So confession is really important because the Bible tells us in Romans 10.10, 10, for with the heart, man believes into righteousness. You believe from your heart. Okay. But then with the mouth, Confession is made unto salvation. So you confess what you know from your heart. Out of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, a man speaketh. Okay? So it's really, really important to speak out what is in your heart and tell God. But that one helps us to understand. These people who say the sinner's prayer, is this what in their, is in their hearts? Because unless you understand, you hear, you understand, and you believe, then the sinner's prayer is nothing. But if you're now confessing and telling God, this is what I've believed, Jesus. I've believed this, that I have sinned against you. I want forgiveness for my sins. I believe that, Jesus, you died on the cross for me and rose again. Father, I give you my life to do as you wish. I want Jesus Christ. You come into my life and into my heart. I ask this in Jesus' name. Now, this time, this prayer makes sense. Are you seeing the point here? But if you say this prayer is the one which is going to send you to heaven, then it will send you to hell. But if you say this prayer as a way of confessing what is in your heart, then that's true. Are you seeing the point? So this prayer cannot save you. You can only be saved by believing this is just a form of confession of what is in your heart, what you have understood. And that's why there are so many false conversions out there. Because people are believing that the prayer can save you. And the Bible tells us very well that God does not even hear the prayer of a sinner. God doesn't even hear the prayer of a sinner. Let me prove to you. So if you are praying and you are a sinner and you are praying the sinner's prayer, God does not even hear. Okay, let me show you. Let me show you. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, okay, and I want to prove to you that God does not even hear this prayer of a sinner. Psalms 18, verse 41. Okay, it says, They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto unto the Lord, but he answered them not. You see these sinners, they are crying. They are telling God, oh, please help us, help us, save us. But God just kept quiet. He did not hear them because they are sinners. Let me prove to you again. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs 1, verses 28. Okay? See, I'll give you about five verses to confirm to you that God does not even hear a prayer of a sinner. Then shall they call upon me, Proverbs 128, they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. You see, they are calling upon God, but he will not answer. They shall seek me early, 
but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. You see, God is telling you, love knowledge. Know the truth, the gospel. So if you not hear the gospel and know it and believe it, then you will call upon me and I will not answer. You will say those sinners prayer and I will not do anything. I will not do anything. God says, even your prayer, if you're a sinner, is an abomination to him. When you're, when, when, when you're trying to uh, pray to him, he does not even want to hear. Let me show you. Proverbs 28, verses 9. Let me show you. God does not even is not even interested with your prayer. See what he says in Proverbs 28, 9. He that turneth away is here from hearing the law. The law, from hearing what the law of God is. I'm not talking about you following Moses' law. Following the new law. The new law of Christ is do what uh, uh, do what Christ <clears throat> has commanded you. He's commanded you to believe in him. The Bible tells us that uh, uh, this is the work of God, that you believe in whom he sent. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, and that's the law. He has commanded you to go and believe Jesus, whom he sent. But then when you turn away from hearing the law, Jesus says, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Your prayer, you'll be praying and God is like, ah, stop making noise to me. I don't want to hear what you're say, telling me. Because I told you to believe the gospel, you, you're praying. What are you asking? What Do you think sinner's prayer is going to save you? I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear. He says that he will even hide his eyes from us. Let me show you Isaiah. Isaiah 1 verses 15. When you pray, he will even hide his face from you. Because he doesn't want the sinner's prayer. He wants you to believe the gospel. He says in Isaiah 1.15, And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yeah, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Go clean up yourself. You see? When you spread forth your hands, you're, you're spreading your hands. Oh, oh Lord, please listen to me. I'm a sinner. He does not want you. He's telling you, my eyes, I'm hiding my eyes from you. Even when you make many prayers, I will not hear anything. Because your hands are full of blood. Go and believe the gospel first. I have so many verses on this. But let me just show you maybe two more or one from the New Testament. You may say, oh, Keith, you're showing us uh, uh, prayers from the Old Testament. Let me show you what, what he says in the New Testament. John, in John 9, John 9 verses uh, 31 okay see what the bible says here now we know that god heareth not sinners god does not hear sinners but if any man be a worshiper of god and does his will him he heareth you see this is a full conclusion that god does not hear the prayer of a sinner he does not hear the sinner's prayer he hears someone who is confessing what he has believed. He hears someone who is following his will and who is doing according to what he has asked him to do. So do you believe the sinner's prayer saves? If you still believe it, then uh, I don't know. I don't know what else I can say. My friend, sinner's prayer does not save. God will only hear you when you're confessing what you believe from your heart. Hope this has been a blessing to you. If you enjoyed this video, please, uh, you can give it a like. You can also uh, share and subscribe. And uh, check out in the description below. We have a couple of other channels that uh, we also post outside YouTube. You can go and check them out and also share to your friends so that they can hear the gospel. God bless you and have a great time.